Hello there, World of Tankers, and welcome to the channel. I'm your host, Drudels Blitz, and in today's video, I'll be playing in the Vickers Light. This is a Tier 10 British Tech Tree Light Tank. It is a vehicle alongside the Vickers CR and FE301 that you really just don't see played anymore. And that is mainly down to the fact that this vehicle's alpha damage got reduced from what was 350 down to 300. It is actually the lowest damage per shot tier 10 in the game now. But it still does have some pretty good strengths going for it, especially being a light tank, which we'll be talking about in today's video, and why I still feel this is one of the strongest lights if you know how to play it properly. First of all, we have the gun. It's very accurate with 0.29 dispersion, which is expected, obviously, with such a low alpha, but it is still nice that it has very accurate dispersion. Its DPM is over 3,000, which is pretty good, especially for a light, and penetration-wise, it's very good. 263 on AP, 319 on the heat, especially next update, because it's going to be getting a buff on the heat with calibrated. It's pretty good there. The high explosive is great. 116 millimeters of hash pen means that if you get the side or even front of some of the lightly armored mediums, you can easily cut through them with high explosive, dealing upwards of 380 damage per shot. It has 300 standard and 260 on the heat, but yeah, 260 damage on the heat, that's pretty dang bad. It has 10 degrees of gun depression though, which does make up a bit for it, makes this vehicle very flexible. The thing that I like about the Vickers a lot is that it's more of a medium tank than a light. It has a top speed of 65, a reverse of 23, but it's really the armor that's surprising. The upper plate's 120 mils thick, which is actually pretty good. It means that if you're using your 10 degrees of gun depression, you can actually get some decent bounces from other tier 10 and tier 9 tanks. And the turret is also fairly troll. I mean, yes, if you aim at the edges of the turret properly, you'll pen the majority of the time. But if you actually hit the gun mantlet, you are going to bounce the Vickers Light a lot because the armor on this vehicle is actually quite troll. As I said, it's more of a light tank, in fact, or a medium. I actually trust the armor on this vehicle more than a tank like the Leopard 1 or even an Object 140, which is pretty funny. But it's not reliable armor. If you have a tank destroyer aiming at you, do not expect to get bounces. It's really only going to be mediums, you know, like the T92 one up against us. I can say there's a 50-50 chance it'll pen me in the turret, which is pretty nice. There's not a lot of chance that, like, a Bosch Option, for example, is going to get a bounce in that situation but we'll see what we can do here do i agree with wargaming lowering the damage per shot of the vickers light no personally i think it should be around 330 i think that would have been a pretty solid alpha if it kept the dpm to be fair it actually gained damage per minute but i still think that uh, the alpha damage is a little too low for what the tank is but we're going to aim it on the 50B, and we are going to get a pen into his tank. 283, pretty low roll. But, uh, yeah, right now I'm thinking of leaving. I'm sorry, Mr. Ball Shation, but I don't know what to do here, especially to help you in this situation. You played a little over-aggressive, and, uh, yeah, I mean, you're kind of screwbo bagging, I'm going to be honest. We're going to see if I can get some shells into maybe the WZ-114. There you go, 326 damage shot into his vehicle, not bad. We're going to aim it on the WZ again. That one did miss. Huh. This is looking really bad, guys. Gotta be honest. Uh, I mean, I do have some support, but at the same time, quite confident that I'm going to be rushed here pretty pretty soon. So we're just going to wait here. There's the enemy WZ. We get a nice shot in. Very low world only, 257 damage. We have the BZ looking at me, but you'll notice the 183 absolutely deleted that player. All right, let's see if we can maybe get a shell into the BZ. There you go. Nice 280 damaging shot. He fired at me and obviously missed, so we're going to aim it again. There you go. Another 280-ish damage shell, which is pretty nice. We are getting some big low rolls here, though, I will say that. Um, don't really like the situation that's been placed in front of me, if I'm going to be real. Let's see. I'm going to move over here, and we're going to go low. We missed the enemy 50B, but that's all right. We're going to head over here, right where we have the FE2 and 5B183 covering us. So if they try to rush me, they're going to have to deal with that 183, which is obviously not ideal for them. However, the 183 did miss, which is not great for us either. Um, and not going to say not going to say that's good at all there. Huh. Let's see. We got the 114 off to the side. We track him. He bounces us, which is actually pretty nice. 
We're going to back up. We're going to get a second shell into the 114. I mean, we're getting good bleeds into his vehicle. And this is where the solid DPM of this tank is obviously quite nice, and you're actually going to be able to use it pretty effectively. We killed the driver on this 114, which means he's going to have a very, very hard time dealing with me. And with the nice HE damage his vehicle features, we are easily able to rip into his tank with high explosive ammunition. There you go, another nice shell into his tank. All right, well, let's reload again. We are going to clear this 50B, I can tell you that for a fact, and that is because there's no way this 50B has a full clip loaded. You can see he YOLO'd me, only had two shells, and now we're able to use our high explosive squash head ammo onto the rear of his tank. This is where the uh, damage output of the Vickers Light is actually quite impressive, and where it actually feels like a properly good vehicle. So this was a really good game. We used our teammates, the 183 and the Conway, to help us get some bleeds, to get some farm, and we uh, did that perfectly. We were able to distract our opponents and come out with a win. So, as you can see, game number one, we did over 4,700 damage. We used our mobility and everything. This is why the Vickers Light is such a strong vehicle. You know, a lot of people say, oh, it's not that good because it's, it's damage per shot isn't very high, or this or that, but... As I showed, once you get to the rear of certain tanks, especially with the high explosive, you can absolutely rip into them. I mean, how many times did we shoot that 50B? And we took, uh, yeah, 1,200 off of four shots. So that means we averaged about 400 damage. Well, not 400, but around 350 with the shells. We fired a little bit more, which is pretty dang nice. And we can take a look at the 114. We took 2,300 off of him and finished him off. I really like the Vickers Light. I think it's one of these super strong vehicles because it has medium capabilities with light tank camo. And as I said, that allows you to be super, super capable. So obviously, we're going to try and uh, get another solid result out here. Here we are on Desert Sands. This is a okay map. The enemy team only has a 30B in terms of mobility, where we have a Progetto 65 and me and the Vickers. That is a huge advantage, but hopefully the Progetto supports me, because if he doesn't, the 30B is obviously a super dangerous tank. It's very troll against high explosive to a point where I don't trust my HE frontally, unless I have, like, its lower plate, but I don't really trust the HE on the sides of the 30B at all, so right now, we are just going to wait. We're going to see if the enemies get spotted. Our Progetto is playing fairly aggressive, which is fine. I mean, if he wants to play aggressive, I'm not going to complain, but I'm not going to do anything too aggressive myself until we see where the enemy team is moving. But now that we notice base C is being captured, that does give me the ability to move up, and uh, we'll see if we can get any shells out. They have two grills, which would not surprise me if one of them was on the rails over here. Uh, I do not see the grills. Okay, well, what we're going to do right now, because our Progetto is quite a bit ahead of us, I think the best play is to move up over here. There we go, we actually have the enemy 30B. Oh, there you go, we have the grill. That was a bad shot from the O. I, uh over angulared the shot we were not able to hit anybody but we can see both grills are already spotted which is pretty good there you go we get a nice shell into the enemy grill for 346 pretty good stuff we are still spotted interesting okay well at this point i'm gonna move up uh because i think we have to so that's what i'm gonna try and do we have the 5a we have the grill 15 i'm gonna go wide here we're gonna get behind the grill and nice little juicer into his vehicle however my teammate almost just screwed me there. Not really... Oh, my bro. This, uh... All right, what I'm going to do is I'm going to start off by loading an HE shell into that player there. Then I'm going to chill right here. We're going to aim it on the IS-7. And there you go. 417 damage juicer into the rear of his vehicle. Pretty nice stuff. No more shells are able to be dealt. So at this point, you're now going to make our way over towards the 30B. Uh, this is not looking like a win, though. For some reason, our 5A flanked instead of his doing his job, you know, with the rest of the team. That's not going to help out our team all too much. We have the 30B, not able to high explosive pen him, but still a pretty decent roll. We have a pretty healthy U100, which is also not awful, to be honest. Um, what I'm hoping right now is that we can possibly get to the side of this show. Eh, we're not able to HEM, and he's, of course, running the double shotgun, which makes him incredibly dangerous to deal with. We have the IS-7 showing me a side. We get a nice clear into the IS-7. All right, well, we're going to move on over towards the enemy grill, which is behind our team over here. We're going to see if I can get some damage into this grill. Let's move over. There you go. Nice 288. While the grill does shoot me, I'm hoping, ideally, that we're able to get one more shell into his vehicle, get behind him here just like so. 
Now we reload, and we're going to load in an AP shell and finish him off. Pretty solid stuff overall. Now we do have this enemy, yo, who looks like he wants to try and rush me. Personally, I'm not going to let that fly. So we're going to pretend like we're going over here. We're going to keep on going this way. And then ideally what we're going to do is we're just going to flex back over here. Let's see. The yo is obviously going to poke me. And we get one nice shell into the yo. He misses the first shot. And uh, we need to figure out which way this yo is going to try and maneuver here. You know what? I'm going to take the risk and say that the yo does not have two shells. And it looks like he actually doesn't have two shells. So I'm just going to go for it. And there you go. Yo actually dies. Perfect. Okay. Well, at this point, the 5A is being rushed. And we need to see, ideally, if we can possibly get the 30B. Let's see. Well, unfortunately, my teammate does get cleared. Let's see what actually ends up happening here. We got the 57 heavy. Um, not really liking this situation, I'll tell you that. That WZ did throw big time. Um, we got the 57 Heavy over here. That was unfortunate. We got spotted as well, which is not what I like to see. Hmm. Is the 30B over here? Well, the problem is base cap right now. The base is going higher and higher, and there's not much I can do about that. Uh, we can see that the 57 Heavy has stepped into base B. He's going to be making his way around there, most likely. So we're going to go wide over here. We're going to see if we can squeeze and get ourselves the 30B picked up. Let's see, 57 Heavy had to have gone wide. All right, well, I'm going to step into the base really quick. I think this is a good play. Um, just so I don't have to worry about the base cap, I'm really hoping the 57 Heavy is not fast enough to make his way into this base. Okay, we can see base A is being captured, which is the 30B. So we're going to ignore the 57 Heavy, ideally. We're going to leave this way. There you go, nice shot into the 57. Now we're going to pretend like we're leaving. We're going to head over this way. And then ideally what we're going to do is we're going to turn back, keep going this way. And then, yeah, we're going to turn back over here and uh, we're going to head back towards where the 57 was. Ideally. Oh, that's not good. All right. Well, let's just see if we can bait the 57. There you go. Another nice shell into his vehicle. Let's see if we can bait another shot. And nah, I was hoping we could go for it. The problem was base cap was too high. That was the problem. We did a solid job here. And I can't get mad at the Vickers. The Vickers light did its job. Again, no issues. 4,600 damage here. R5A needed to clear that 30B. And if he had, we probably could have won that game. But I mean, our whole team fell apart. Our Progetto YOLO'd and bled all of his health. This was just a rather unfortunate team we had. We did a solid job, though. We were able to clear the O, clear the enemy team, get good bleeds out, and do our job. And as you can see, the Vickers Light is a fantastic tier 10. Both games were back-to-back. -back. In both battles, we did over 4,000 damage. And that is because the mobility is great. The DPM is solid. The Hesh is fantastic. And the accuracy is amazing. So I really like this tank. I think people truly underrate this vehicle and its capabilities. Now, yes, you can type in the comments, oh, it's just not the same, this and that. But personally, I really like this vehicle. And I still think in a good player's hands, it is easily one of the stronger tanks out there. It's definitely better than the 132.1. It's a lot more flexible than the T100LT, and it has DPM where the Sheridan might struggle in that regard. With, you know, the accuracy, it makes this a very flexible take. And again, the Balshatillon, while it does have incredible damage output and is easily one of the strongest tier 10s in the game, it still doesn't have that flexibility. The Vickers is a light that no matter what situation you are in is always going to be flexible. It's always going to have DPM. It's always going to have accuracy. It always has that hash if you need it, and it always has view range and spotting capabilities. All the other lights are unique in their capabilities, but they always lack in some regard. This tank has it all, and because of that, I still think it is one of the most enjoyable tanks in Tier 10. Let me know if you agree. Let me know if you disagree. I'll see you all in the next one. Bye-bye.